Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, July 21st, 2014. I'm David Knight, and here are our top stories. Tonight, Border Patrol agents are kept in the dark about recent cartel violence. Then, what you're not being told about Flight MH17. And Verizon makes it trendy to surrender your privacy. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. To make you think, oh, they're trying to stop terrorists. No, they're tracking everything you do to know you better than you know yourself, to be able to give that select corp. Now, if mainstream media was not functioning in a purely propaganda mode, it would be asking the typical kind of questions that you ask in journalism. Who, what, where, why? Now, we immediately got some implausible answers about who. We were told what it was, and although that was reasonable that it was a Buk missile system, we were not shown any photographs. And we're going to have some stories about that later on. But the real question is, why was the airplane where it was? Now, earlier today on the Alex Jones radio show, he took some calls from airline pilots and air traffic controllers, and they raised these same questions. And we're going to have a report about that at the end of the show. But let's remember that it wasn't just that this flight MH17 was over a Ukrainian war zone. It was also the height that it was told to fly by the Ukrainian air traffic controllers. It was it requested after they put it into that airspace to fly at only 30 at 35,000 feet. Then they were told to go lower to 33,000 feet, which was right at the level that the European controllers had warned people not to go below. And of course, the FAA had given hard prohibitions to all American airlines and American pilots. And now we see something even more bizarre in Syria. This is also involves a Malaysian airliner. It was diverted over Syrian airspace. Now, on Robert Perry's site, consortiumnews.com, this is the question that he says his source raised to him. He said, the dog not barking question, and that's a Sherlock Holmes analogy, of course, on the catastrophe over the Ukraine is, what did the U.S. surveillance satellite imagery show? It's hard to believe that with the attention of the U.S. intelligence concentrated on eastern Ukraine for the past half year, that the alleged trucking of several large Buk anti-aircraft missile systems from Russia to the Ukraine then back to Russia didn't show up somewhere. And he points out that the Buk missiles are about 16 feet long. They're trucked around on large trucks or on top of tanks. And then he asked the question, how can the Washington Post run front page stories like the one it did on Sunday, which gives a definitive title. The U.S. official says that Russia gave these systems. He says, how can they do that without demanding from these same U.S. officials details about what the satellite images, the U.S. satellite images disclose? In other words, they would see these large systems. And if they're making these claims, clearly they have some pictures to back this up. We even got pictures before Iraq or after Iraq when we were being lied to about that. And then he points out this interesting revelation from his source. He says, there was also a suggestion from the source that the soldiers involved were undisciplined, possibly drunk and possibly Ukrainian, since the imagery showed what looked like beer bottles scattered around the site. See, it's so detailed that they can see the beer bottles. Actually, it's probably so detailed with today's satellite imagery, they could tell you what brand of beer they were drinking. But we don't see any pictures of what we're told shot it down or people who did shoot it down. We believe that they would have those images. Reputable sources like the Washington Post are basically putting out the talking points in a propagandistic way saying that we know this is true and yet they haven't vetted those sources. We haven't seen the satellite images. We do have some photographic evidence, however, that shows that the Ukraine regime was delivering Buk missiles to troops. Now, this is a story by Kurt Nemo on today's Infowars.com. He says, now listen to this take on it. We have a California Republican and a House Foreign Affairs Chairman, Ed Royce, and he's criticizing the Obama administration for not sending weapons, for not sending weapons to the regime in Kiev. Now, of course, the most vocal neocons are the ones right now who are in the GOP because they're trying to score some cheap political points out of the fact that we haven't escalated this by sending more arms in. And Royce was saying that we that Russia has sent in tanks, rocket launchers, other military equipment to the separatists, although, of course, he did not provide evidence of the transfer. Well, we do know that the Ukrainian government has Buk missiles. Now, as we pointed out last Thursday when this first happened, this is a picture from July 4th, 2014, which shows 
Buk missile launchers being transferred by Ukrainian government forces. So, yes, they both had it, and the fact that these are made by Russia doesn't really say anything one way or the other because most of the weapons there that the Ukraine has, as well as the separatists, are Russian-made. And, of course, it was a Russian-made missile that shot down a Russian commercial airliner back in 2001. Now, just so that you know that we're in full-out war hysteria mode, we now see people like Ron Paul and other people who are dissenting from this line of attack, dissenting from jumping ahead full steam into a war hysteria. We see them demonized as dissenters. And this is a story from the National Journal. Ron Paul is Putin's new best friend. They say, it used to be that blaming America for crises abroad was largely the province of liberals. But now we have Ron Paul, who has been quick to attack the West and President Obama for pointing any fingers in the direction of Russian President Vladimir Putin. It says, just days after the tragic crash of Malaysian Airlines flight over eastern Ukraine, Western politicians and media joined together to gain the maximum propaganda value for the disaster. That's what Ron Paul said. He said, it had to be Russia. It had to be Putin, they said. Now, she doesn't, this is the writer, is Lucia Graves. She doesn't give any of the information that Ron Paul said as to why he believes this is a false narrative, why they're pushing that, why it's propaganda. But we carried the story on Infowars.com. We carried Ron Paul's full article, and he has some very good reasons. Now, this is what Ron Paul actually said. He said, just days after the tragic crash of Malaysian airliner flight over eastern Ukraine, Western politicians and media joined together to gain the maximum propaganda value from the disaster. He says, Obama's ambassador to the UN, Samantha Powers, at the UN Security Council, announced who was responsible just one day after the crash. But he says, these are the things they will not report. And he goes on to list several things that you're not hearing from the media. He says, without U.S.-sponsored regime change, it's unlikely that hundreds would have been killed in the unrest that follows, and of course, the Malaysian airline crash would have never happened. He also says they'll not report that the Ukrainian government also uses the exact same Russian-made weapons, which is what we just pointed out in our story. He says they will not report that the post-coup government in Kiev has killed 250 people in the breakaway region since June, including 20 that have been killed after the plane crash. He says they won't report that neither Russia nor separatists in eastern Ukraine have anything to gain but everything to lose by shooting down a passenger liner full of civilians, and they won't report that the Ukrainian government has much to gain by pinning the attack on Russia. And finally, he says, and they will not point out the similarities to what happened a year ago in Syria with the sarin gas attack. And of course, we have pointed out that as well as the lack of motivation many times we're going to have those callers who were pilots and air traffic control per personnel who wanted to know why the plane was where it was. And of course, that brings up questions of contributory negligence at the very least, if not questions of false flags. Roy, what do you think about this as an air traffic controller? And did I get it right or part of it right? Uh, what do you think? I mean, isn't the story that that they that all the other air traffic wasn't going through this corridor and that that, that this flight went through a war zone? Hey, Alex, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's something that's not adding up there. Uh, if, you know, the pilots do check their flight plans 10 times over, the FAA said that they prohibit our airlines from flying over these war zones right now, so there's no way that you'd see a carrier flying through there, especially a 777. I'm not sure overseas how they're working that, but I imagine it'd be similar since uh, all of our rules are roughly the same or getting close to being the same. So, yeah, you're right. It's not adding up at all. Well, I had some family that worked for FAA Europe, and I gave them a call and they worked there in the 80s uh, in translating, and they said that there's just no way they would direct an airliner over a war zone. Uh, absolutely not. And uh, it's not uncommon, for example, on Tuesday, the 11th of September 2001, where they'll evacuate. They'll tell everybody in the control tower to leave their position and send them into the space down below where there is no windows, and then they'll staff that control tower with black ops. It happens all the time in Fallon, Nevada. Uh, the control tower at Area 51, Diego Garcia, this happens. You know, it's not uncommon to see that happen. So if the controllers have no idea what's going on, again, uh, repeating the compartmentalization of the federal government. What does your gut as an air traffic controller tell you is going on uh, over here with this Russia situation and this uh, shoot down of this aircraft? Uh, 11 years as a controller, I'm, I'm, uh, my gut tells me that 
uh, obviously there's a cover up going on. And again, if you ask controllers in Europe, chances are they were either removed or if they do talk about it, they're going to be disappeared. Brendan, thanks for calling in. Thanks for holding. Uh, you're on the air. You say you're in the Air Force. What's your take on all this? Uh, yes, thank you, Alex. Yes, I was in the Air Force uh, in the early 90s. Uh, it, it's very possible that, well, first of all, we have an aircraft that's on a projected uh, flight path. It's pretty much going to stay on that path uh, unless there's some extraneous circumstances that are going to force it to have to fly around something, like in the case of a, a 747 that has to fly around a, a volcano that has erupted. I remember there was a story from the 80s where a 747 flew through an ash cloud at nighttime from a volcano and shut the engines down. Uh, you know, nowadays we have real-time information to let those pilots and crew plan for any anything in the way of the flight, the projection. Yeah, so, I mean, it's path. all plotted out for months. Don't fly over this area, correct? So the, the the big question should be who directed the flight over it, correct? Correct, and and there's reports that there were Ukrainian fighters that actually went up to altitude and possibly have nudged that Malaysian airliner, you know, so many miles uh, each way uh, above or below uh, or within, I should say, uh, the Lugansk, Donetsk region of Ukraine. And then that way, that way, I've seen those reports, that way there wouldn't be a record of the flight plan being changed. They would just order them radio to radio. Absolutely, absolutely. So if, if their projected flight path was, okay, well, we know that's a war zone, so let's fly above that war region or below the region, and that will be our projected flight path. And then when you're in that area, those fighters come in and force you back uh, into that war, over that war zone, and then break off, and then, you know, it's it's shot down by a missile or or what what have you. So, but what I'd like to call attention to is a short video that showed a, uh, it was either a pro-Russian pro rebel or Ukrainian forces, uh, some guy that was off of the back of a truck with an armful of fresh passports, a crisp passports. No, I saw that. I saw that. I know. None of this adds up. I, quite frankly, again, don't know what happened, but I know it's war propaganda. I know we don't need a new Cold War over this. I know it's a war zone, and I know that if it turns out to be the Russians, I believe, according to studying international law and seeing other shootdowns, that it that the blame goes on whoever directed that flight over a war zone. Uh, I mean, you're in the Air Force and, and, and seem to know a lot about this, but uh, is that correct, what I just said? Absolutely. I, I, I just believe that, and I'm not pro-Russia either, but I just believe that why would they spend the time and the resources to prove that they didn't have anything to do with it, uh, you know, and to prove to the rest of the world, hey, you know, we, we what, what reason will we have to bring this airliner down so we could draw the attention of the West and the rest of the world on us? Uh, you know, Russia has a lot to, to lose if a major war started, you know, that huge, you know, gas and oil deal or whatever there with China, All of you know, they, they stand a lot to lose by doing something stupid like that and, 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 and inciting, uh, you know, a conflict. It just doesn't make any sense. So I, I, agree. I don't see. I, I agree. Don't this, see. this is Lusitania 2.0. Great points. Thank you for calling in, Brendan. Uh, let's talk to Tom in Baltimore, then Ron, John, and others. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Jones. I just wanted to elaborate a little bit on what one of your previous callers had stated about the jets possibly uh, shuttling that craft over a bit. I had thought that uh, since day one that that might be a possibility. I, I had that in mind because when I was a police officer, we would have a lot of local news helicopters figure out from time to time where attack units were operating. When I was in tech, uh, usually we were doing sensitive operations. We didn't want them shadowing us everywhere we went. They were giving away our position. So we would call one of our helicopters to come, and they didn't have to contact them by radio. They would spot them up at night, 
sometimes, or they would just fly by and nudge them. Um, my thinking is if you've got several fighter jets flying aggressively by your plane, you're not going to have to have any radio contact whatsoever, which might be what they had in mind. You're going to steer clear of where those fighter jets are operating the same way the news helicopters would clear out when our chopper would buzz them or spot them up. It makes perfect sense. And you would have no record of any communication telling them to do anything. They would just do it. Wow. What does your gut overall tell you is going on here? You know, I'll tell you what, you can't believe anything that you hear from the politicians or the news, or we used to call it in court, a fruit of the poisonous tree. You know, once they tell you and feed you so many lies, you can't take anything that they say as factual or truthful at all. You know, they've done it to themselves. So it's really a guessing game. Uh, it certainly, though, appears that, uh, like you said, uh, you know, we've uh, traditionally not been big fans, this country of Russia, but they certainly seem to be operating in the way that we had always uh, strived to operate. Uh, they're doing things uh, that the United States used to do when, when I was a younger man, and uh, yeah, I can't fault them for that. So. You know, right now, the credibility has to go with them. I mean, that's just call it the way I see it. I agree with you. Plus, they don't stand a game from shooting this airliner down. Well, that's it for our news tonight. Now, if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, please consider supporting our operation. Of course, one subscription can be shared with up to 11 other people at the same time. Gives you access not only to the nightly news every night, but also to all of Alex Jones's documentaries. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, right after this break, we have Alex Jones' special report on Matt Drudge, how Matt Drudge changed the world. Stay with us. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.